of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 23 the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 23 truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly, Yahweh, our Elohim, is the salvation of Israel. Amen. This is part two to Yahuwah is salvation. You may be seated. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains, truly in Yahweh, our Elohim, is the salvation of Israel. Everybody that goes to church especially those who are still caught up in the whole misunderstanding of church. Everybody is concerned about this one word, salvation. Oh, preacher, just let me know how I'm saved. And so, being saved is of utmost importance and a primary concern for people around the world everywhere. And may I say this, with 41,000 different denominations and biblical sects, please believe this, that there's a whole lot of different views concerning salvation. Some people think that salvation is a matter of saying some magic words. Sort of like Abra Kadabra or Hocus Pocus. They believe if they just walk the aisle and say some magic words that it automatically guarantees that they pass passed from death to life. And I have to continually warn these, especially these unconscious Hebrews, I have to constantly warn them of what our Hamasiach says in Mark chapter 6 as well as in supporting Gospels. That these people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I know this is going out worldwide, so I better, I better make it as plain as I possibly can. It don't matter what you say with your mouth. If your heart is far from Yah. Ain't no magic words. Ain't no hocus. No hocus pocus. There is no abra cadabra. Salvation based on this holy manuscript is of Yahuwah. Yahuwah. And for some of you all, 
who have a weird accent, Yahweh. Yo, they white. Now, what we are reading here is actually sort of a poem that Jeremiah writes concerning the condition of the children of Israel who at a time of prosperity have forsaken their most high and have decided to walk after the customs, the vain customs and traditions of the Canaanite pagan heathens that surround them. So much so that they began to say things like, y'all doesn't care what we do. As a matter of fact, when Jeremiah, Jeremiah decided to use a illustration, he decided to give us a picture of our people. The picture he came up with was a harlot. Yeah, he said, I gotta, I, I'm gonna use an illustration to try to make our people see their condition and what he came up with was a whore. A prostitute. A loosey-goosey. I wish I had a witness here. A call girl who will go to anyone who calls her and at the same time is married. It's one thing to be a single home. A single prostitute. A single whore. Yeah, you whore but you single. But it's quite... Am I offending you? I'm sorry. It's quite another thing to be a whore with a husband. And that's the picture Jeremiah is painting in the opening chapters of his book. And, and when, we, when we think about the fact that Israel the children of Israel, who at this point are now divided, the northern tribes, ten tribes are in the north, two of the tribes are in the south. Uh, they are married to Yahuwah. Put that in your mind. The Elohim, the most high of the universe, has chosen them to be his. And he has kept his, his side of the bargain. He said, if you just love me, matter of fact, he said, I love you with an everlasting love. And I provide for you, he did it. When you're hungry, I'll feed you. He fed them. When they were in the desert, the wilderness, and they needed clothes, he made sure they had clothes, food, and shelter. He fought their battles. He gave them riches. He was a, my goodness, I'm preaching, good husband. In other words, Israel and her treacherous sister Judah had no reason to commit adultery. Not that there is reason, but you know, sisters will come up with a reason, you know. Baby, why did you do it? Well, because you didn't treat me right. Baby, why did you do it? Well, I was tired of being broke. I thought about her. Baby, why did you do it? Well, because he looked so much better than you. 
baby, baby, why did you do it? Uh, because remember what you did to me? Baby, why did you do it? Well, I figured that I wasn't going to get caught. Baby, why did you? <laughs> and she got a bunch of reasons, is my point. You know, ain't no new reasons, but it's still reasons. Uh, it may not justify the action, but here's my reason. But well, what do you do with a woman who's playing the whore against a husband and she ain't got no reason? Ain't nobody out there better lover. Nobody looks better than your husband because the records say he's all together lovely. Nobody's got more money than your husband because he owns the world. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. All the gold, all the silver in the hills are his. Matter of fact, you can't say the other fellow was more influential because at, at the power of your husband, by his word, kings are established. And by his words, kingdoms are brought down. He rises up one and puts up another. So what's your excuse, baby? I don't get it. Well, he, you can't say he's not been there for you. Because he already says, I'm nearer to you than your own breath. You can't say that, you can't say that he don't spend enough time with you because he's already told you that he's the apple, that you're the apple of his eye. And that all of his thoughts are toward you continually. So what's your excuse? You don't have one. Other than you just wanted to act a fool. You just wanted to play the harlot. Now here's the trap. Here's the tragedy. And I, I'm gonna get to my point, I'm gonna let y'all go. Don't don't miss this. Israel, the children of Israel, both the north and southern tribe, have played the harlot with the nation surrounding them. And they've done it all with everybody. And I told you this on last week, it don't matter who. Israel got a problem. She is a whore in her, in her mind. And one of the problems with her is she can't be tamed. She's just wild for wild's sake. Oh, if you don't believe me, you should read, you should go back and read uh, Isaiah, the book right before this one. Isaiah said that, that the ox knows his owner and the ass his master's crib. My people, they don't even know, nor do they consider he said, I don't even know if whooping my children is going to help. Because it seems like the more I discipline them, the worse they get. And Isaiah also said to his children, won't y'all come to me and let's just reason. Let's just try to put some kind of reason. Let's, let's, let's talk it out. Because I want to clean you from your idolatry. No, I just gave you that as an introduction because I want to show you something. Israel basically says, no. I want to keep doing my thing. But at the same time, I want you to always be there just in case I call you. I want to do my thing, but I might need you. So just sort of stay on standby. You get that? And not realizing that her husband, who is the most high yeah, is about to destroy all of her lovers. She, she doesn't realize that her lovers are her, and I, I'm trying to keep this in a, in a, in a way that y'all can get it, her lovers are her husband's enemies. Every one 
of her lovers hates her husband. Every one of her lovers despises her husband. Watch this. Every one of her lovers knows her husband because he done whooped them before. But he just didn't utterly destroy them. So she's not just out with anybody. She's out with the lovers that her husband hates the most. Did that add something to the message, y'all? I hate this Negro. And when you tell your wife, I can't, I don't, I don't deal with this Negro because this Negro is crazy. I, I can't stand. And then she go and sleep with him. That puts a weird. That that's puts a weird crook in it. That's a weird taste in your mouth. That's a weird vibe. And so. Once it happens, really, as far as Israel is concerned, it should be over. You get it? Once you step out of here and did what you done, I'm talking in earth language now, ground language. You did what you did. Are you done what you done? You should know when you did it, it was going to sever the relationship between me and you. Amen. When Marie and I got ready to put our vows out there, you know, and I told her all the other stuff don't matter. You can put all the other vows because you ain't keep that limit anyway. Here's the one you got to keep. You cheat on me, it's over. All the rest of them, we don't need it. You put them in you if you want. Honor, love, cherish, obey, and all that. I know you ain't going to do all that kind of stuff. You might eventually, but we're not going to we're not going to wrap this relationship around that sickness and in health and cherish and all that. We should have been asking questions like, who's going to wash the dishes and who's going to sweep the floor and who's going to change these babies' diapers and all that. That would have been more realistic vow. So we don't need all that. We need one vow. Are you going to stay with me alone for life? And am I going to be with you alone for life? And when she said yes, and I said yes, that was it. One rule. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but she's right here. It ain't like I could make this up. So the moment she decides, if she does decide, the moment she does, she knows that is taking a chance on this relationship never being put back together. It's a severing of the relationship. So now what happens if the woman decides not only am I going out with this one person, but I'm going to be with everybody I can find in every high place, every hotel, every mountaintop, every tree. I'm just going out to play the harlot everywhere. Hold on. But you didn't realize. I'm talking about Israel now. I'm going back to Israel. That the nations that you're playing with are on the list for destruction. If you see the yellow tape, Around the building downtown, said, so "Do not enter because this building will be demolished on such and such a day." Uh, it's a good idea for you not to climb up in that building and hide out just to see whether or not they're gonna really bring it down. Oh, if 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 I've got it on the list for demolition. It's coming down. So the best thing for you to do is not be in the building when I bring it down because it's coming down. I wish I had time to holler at America and to holler at Babylon. They already left this country in tape. 
You understand that it's coming down? This world and its world system has already been marked according to the holy manuscript for destruction. Read the revelation. And he says not just Babylon, but everybody who's been committing adultery with her will be cast into the bed with her and destroyed. Hey, now let me get back to my lesson. I'm done for the day. Watch this. But the Most High Yah says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill all my enemies, but I love you. I mean, you don't understand how much I love you. Uh, I know you played on every green tree. I know you done after the fool. I know you been sleeping all around. And I know you're sleeping with my enemies. I know you're sleeping with the enemy that hates me. But I love you so much that I'm willing. I'm going to have to read the verse because y'all not going to believe this. I couldn't believe it when I read it. Verse 20. Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband. It's in the Bible. So have you dealt treacherously with me. Y'all thought I was making up an illustration that wasn't in the Bible. Huh? I got it from this verse. O house of Israel, a voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. They become perverts. They're perverted. And they have, it's right in the Bible, forgotten Yahuwah, their Elohim. But this verse right here got me. Return. Hold on. You mean, come home? Return who? You backslide. Oh, in the Christian church, sometimes they don't like to use that word backsliding, but these people slid away. He said, but come back. You backsliding children. And in verse 22, he says, and I will heal your backsliding. That word has to do with forgiving you of all the wrong you have ever committed. I'm going to forgive you for the thought of stepping out. I'm going to forgive you for stepping out. I'm going to forgive you for all the different places that you went, all the different men, all the different gods. I'm going to be your healer, your restorer. Return to me, you backslide, and I will heal your backslide. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art Yahuwah our Elohim. Verse 23. Truly, in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. Let me give you this and then, and then get out your way. Watch this. What are y'all doing up in them hills? What, what do you want? What are you hoping for? What is your goal? Do you really think that going up into the hills and hooking up with these false gods and false religions will bring salvation to you. This message goes out worldwide to the 12 tribes of Israel, to those who the Most High 
is waking up and making them conscious. Let me show you what's going on in today's church among the Hebrews. They believe that going to church on Christmas and Easter saves them. Oh, they may not say it, but they believe it. Hebrews may step foot in a congregation all year long. Even their grandmama, big mama, and uncle, tell them, well, get up. What do you mean? You going to church today. What are you talking about? It's Christmas. You at least need to go on Christmas. What they, let me translate that. If you miss Christmas, you're going straight to hell. Oh, the same Hebrew going to do it. Come what? They're going to do it again on Easter. Because they believe that participating in these pagan festival and rites guarantees their salvation. I've been telling Hebrews this for 26 years. Your Hashua HaMessiah, whom y'all keep calling Jesus, that is not his name, was not born on December 25th. That's Tammuz's birthday. And when you talk about you got to go on that day, you're going to celebrate Tammuz. Yahshua HaMashiach was born on the 15th of Sivan. The Feast of Tabernacle, John's Gospel says, and the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. But you believe that pagan festival will grant you salvation. So you go. Likewise, Easter has not even changed her name as starting. You feel like if I don't show up on Esther's day, then I'm not saved. So even the worst of the Hebrews will show up for those days of celebration because they believe salvation is in those two feast days. And have no idea. First of all, Yahushua HaMashiach did not raise on a Sunday at all. He was raised on the Shabbat. Second of all, Esther's day is a satanic day that precedes the resurrection of Yahushua about 4,000 years. We're warned against it in the Holy Manuscript. But you know what? You can't tell a unconscious Hebrew that. Because just three, three or four weeks ago, churches swole up all over the nation. You couldn't find a parking spot. Packed. Why? Because they believe that salvation is in those days. Now that's the longest I was going to spend on, on one point. The rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. And from the multitude of mountains, verse 20, Three. Truly, and Yahuwah is right here. Your Elohim is the salvation of Israel. I was looking at this word salvation. Teshua. In your Strong's, if you have a strong dictionary. Is the Hebrew word 8668 Teshua. And it's taken from a word 3828, which has to do with deliverance. The only way out of our situation is for Yahuwah to deliver us from our situation. Another word, Teshua is translated is salvation. 
which carries with it the idea of rescue. For what you don't know is that your lovers are not really lovers, they're haters, and they want to kill you. So here you run after them seeking love, and they're happy that you came because you came close enough for them to kill you. And the only reason you're not dead now is because I have not suffered them to do to you what's really in their heart. If they had a choice, don't you think they'd have got rid of y'all a long time ago? You Hebrews. That's not the only word. Another word is victory. He's reminding the Hebrews that their victory comes only in Yahuwah. Divine salvation has its focus on rescue from earthly enemies, occasionally referring to uh, salvation from guilt, sin, and punishment. Salvation, my brothers and my sisters, is total. It's not something that you just speak with your mouth and it happens. Salvation is a process. Salvation has a beginning and a middle and an ending. And let me close with this. Salvation is not a thing that you possess. Salvation is a person that possesses you. I don't know if y'all heard that. That should have been tweeted all over America right now, this very day. If you want what they call biblical salvation, it only comes from the Savior. And we discover in this text, Yahoo is the only Savior of Israel. Now, if Yahuwah is the Savior of Israel, it it then bears the reason that Yahuwah, I'm closing, is salvation. <laughs> and if Yahuwah is salvation, and you put that together, you want to say in Hebrew, Yahashu. Therefore, <laughs> when we see Yahashu, we see Yah's salvation. Doing what? Coming to deliver me from the clutches of my enemy. Coming to restore me from that which the enemy has taken. Amen. Yahuwah is salvation is Yahushua. That's how you would say it. That's why we give all honor and praise to Yahushua. Our Hamashiach who by his very name reveals his purpose and his plan. His name is an action word. Easter ain't going to do it. Christmas can't do it. Being baptized in some water ain't going to do it. Being sprinkled on ain't going to save it. Eating a cookie or wafer ain't going to get you to heaven. Are y'all with me yet? The only way that we will receive true salvation is when we follow the Most High, Yah, and return to Him, and He shall save us. With every head bowed and every eye closed, we thank you, our Father for revealing to us today that salvation for Israel is in Yahuwah. That salvation has always been from our most high, our Elohim, Yahuwah. 
And I pray that the world would realize that turning to Yahushua is a turning to Yahuwah. And a return to Yahuwah, Yahuwah, is a return to Torah. That we would follow your word, your way, that we might receive you as our salvation. In the precious name of Yahushua, Ahamasiah. Amen.